Scientists are in heated disagreement about which ancient monster might have ruled the prehistoric seas in what is now Nevada. Our state is home to one of the world's greatest concentrations of ichthyosaur remains, which is why the ichthyosaur is our state fossil. But was there a bigger, badder denizen of that ancient ocean? The author of a controversial theory is back with what he says is new evidence. George Knapp is here with the story. This is sort of the equivalent of Godzilla versus Mothra here. <laughs> yeah. uh, Nevadans have an emotional investment in ichthyosaurs. Part of their appeal is that they ruled the seas for millions of years as the biggest and most ferocious predators around. But what if there was another monster, one that literally ate ichthyosaurs for lunch? Mm -hmm. A scientist who first proposed this theory a few years ago generated worldwide debate and a lot of scorn, but he's back for more and says he has new evidence of the existence of a creature of lore and legend, the Kraken. Release the Kraken! Hideous and humongous, the Kraken has been part of human lore as far back as Greek mythology. Stories about its gigantic tentacles pulling down entire ships were whispered by 12th century Vikings and resurfaced well into modern times. The theory was that it must have been a type of supersized cephalopod, which was good enough for modern movie makers. But a real life Kraken? One that feasted on the known ruler of the prehistoric seas? Come on. So at this point, the, uh, the Kraken hypothesis hypothesis is the best thing going to explain this long-standing long paleontological mystery. When geology professor Mark McMenamin first pitched his theory a few years ago, some colleagues said he might as well have been talking about space aliens killing the dinosaurs. Writer Andrew Corrali wondered if the professor had been smoking Kraken. <laughs> well, now, I, I assure you, we were completely sober when, when we were at Berlin Ichthyosaur. And, uh, uh, I, you know, we we came across this uh, this this deployment of bones that just seemed very strange. The heart of the debate is in central Nevada, adjacent to an old ghost town that's part of the Berlin Ichthyosaur State Park, home of one of the greatest concentration of ichthyosaur remains anywhere. Ichthyosaurs were reptiles which returned to the seas hundreds of millions of years ago. The earliest ones were enormous. That's 56 feet long and 40 tons, or four school buses. This thing, though, in its time, I mean, it had to be the biggest, baddest thing in the, in the ocean. Absolutely. These are definitely the top of the food chain. That's Park rangers like Robin Riggs admit they're they protective of the ichthyosaur status as the like preeminent the monsters chain, of the deep. So they don't support the Kraken theory, but they're happy the controversy has drawn more visitors to the park. This is what they come to see, a protected and unusual deposit of ichthyosaur remains, nine of them laid out as if someone or something had stacked them in a lunchbox. This overlay gives you a better view of what's preserved in the rocks, one big pile of ichthyosaur fossils. And I was struck coming into the fossil house quarry, how strange it looked. It just doesn't look like a natural assemblage of bones, like you might see a dinosaur state park. And then there has been manipulation of these skeletons. Materials have been pulled out and then organized into, ge into geometrical patterns. The prevailing view is that these ichthyosaurs were poisoned by something like red tide and all settled in a crevice or underwater ravine. McMiniman says he's proven that currents alone could not have arranged them this way. He thinks it's more likely they were snatched up by a kraken which snapped their spines and stacked them up like trophies. In a soon to be released paper, he presents new evidence from Germany where an ichthyosaur shows this type of damage. But his head has been twisted like this all the way around, 180 degrees, and the skeleton is otherwise undamaged. So how do you explain something twisting, breaking the neck of the ichthyosaur, twisting it around? It would require... Um, a lot of strength. The biggest problem for this theory is that there are no kraken fossils. Cephalopods are made of squishy stuff that doesn't last all that long. McMiniman's team is coming back to Berlin soon to continue the quest. We are going to be seeking uh, direct evidence for, uh, for this kraken creature. This is going to be a difficult thing to do paleontologically, but we will, we will give it a try. And if it attracts more visitors, so much the better. I've seen quite a few groups that are coming out and, and specifically asking about the kraken. 
Now, whether he finds Kraken remains or not, this research has already led to the discovery of a previously unknown prehistoric crustacean and other advances as well. The Berlin Ichthyosaur State Park gets about 12,000 visitors per year. It's not a big number because of its remote location. The largest percentage of foreign visitors come from Germany. They come to get a look at America's version of Berlin, which of course is a lot different from the one they're used to. We have a lot of links on our website for more information about the park itself and about Ichthyosaur. It's not every day you get to write a news story with that line, release the Kraken. Release the Kraken. <laughs> yeah. How far away is Berlin? Uh, it's it's a good four and a half hours, oh, I think. Boy. So it's a ways up there. But it's a beautiful country. It's a yeah. fun yeah. trip. Neat to see. Thanks, Thanks George. George.